Okay, today's lesson is designing a model of the heart. We're going to investigate how blood moves through the heart and out to the body and comes back in. And it's a pretty exciting lesson. So right now your teachers have got your materials ready. You should have uh, some cups, three colored water red and three colored water blue ready for your investigation and your worksheet. And we're going to actually look into what it's like to use the design process. You may never heard of the design process, so let's get started. Take a look at your worksheet. After I put my name on it, and you put the name on yours, the design process is a way to solve a problem. And scientists and engineers use it all the time. The design process, first you identify a problem, do the research, develop possible answers, choose one solution, design and construct a prototype, test the prototype, and then communicate the results. And then a lot of times you have to reevaluate and redesign it. So here is a human heart that was made. And actually this heart, uh, a person actually got the blood to come in and come out. They had an external drive system, an external drive system where the blood would come in and out. And so this was not that successful. It did what it was supposed to do. This is a picture of a artificial heart that was actually implanted and put inside of a human to pump blood both in and out of the heart. And so people have tried this for many, many years. You see, the heart is a beautiful organ. It's an organ that is really hard to duplicate. And in your science book, there's a whole section on the heart and the circulatory system. And we're going to take a look at that today. I want to review with you how the heart actually became a heart. So on the back of the worksheet, the first thing that we're going to talk about is one of the smallest parts of the human body is the cell. Our body is made up of all types of cells, muscle cells, blood cells, nerve cells. When cells are put together in a certain way, they turn into tissue. Tissue. You may want to make the same drawing on the back of your worksheet. Here's a bunch of cells. Here's a bunch of cells. So tissue is made of many cells. Okay? And so you could have heart tissue or you could have skin tissue. Tissue, when a bunch of tissue is working a certain way, you might end up getting something that looks like this. This is a heart with different chambers, different parts to it. And this is called an organ. An organ is many tissues. Now organs work together to form, for example, your heart is part of a system where blood goes to your arms and to your head and down to your body, to your stomach, and down to your legs, and then blood comes back. And so we got blood coming back in your heart, and also you have these lungs here, the lungs that bring blood and oxygen, and all that is called a system. And it's called a circulatory system when you're talking about blood and respiratory respiratory system when you're talking about air. But it all starts with cells, one, that turn into tissues, two, that can be used to, and as an organ, three, and that's used in a system, four. And that is something you need to know. You need to know that your body is filled with those types of things. In fact, in your book, there's a, an amazing section on, there's an amazing section on the human body and here is exactly what I'm talking about. Here's a different, there's muscular systems, there's skeletal systems, there's nervous systems, digestive systems. But today, we're going to talk about cells, turning to tissues, to organs, to make a heart. Here's a picture again of tissue that turns into, or, uh, that is part of the heart, which is an organ. 
And remember, we have different organs working together and different tissues working together. We get a circulatory system. Now, the circulatory system, almost always, you see it in red and blue. And that's kind of important. And it starts with the heart, with the blood leaving the heart is red. Leaving the heart going down through the descending aorta, splitting, going down to your legs, all the way down to your toes. And finally, coming back without oxygen, without oxygen, back to your heart. And so blood comes out of your heart and into your heart. And we have different names for those. Check it out. If it leaves your heart, it's called an artery. Arteries are strong, rounded, shaped vessels. Arteries are hard. They, that's the blood that leaves your heart. It's pumped out of your heart. The blood then goes to very, very small capillaries where the oxygen and the food and gases are exchanged. And then it goes back to your heart through the veins through the veins, and it's a blue colored. So that's why we're using red and blue for the two colors of blood with oxygen from the heart and blood without oxygen going back to the heart. Now, if you look at this, here's an artery, here's a real vein. Now, the heart pushes blood out. It's called your pulse. You can feel it. Right under your jaw, there's two arteries that come from your heart right up here called the carotid artery. And you put your two fingers and lean over. You can feel it. If you don't have any pulse, raise your hand. You need to go to the nurse, you're dead. Well, no, you probably couldn't raise your hand. Anyway, you have blood pushing from your heart. So how does blood get back to your heart? Because it goes through all those arteries and down to the little bitty capillaries. It's got to get back somehow. The way it gets back is... Every time you move and breathe, you're squeezing the vascular system or the veins and you're squeezing the blood back to your heart. And that's where the blue comes in. And if you look, <laughs> I don't know if you can see this on my arm, but check it out. Here is veins. These are veins. The doctors and nurses love me because my veins pop right up. And these veins are blue. You can actually see them blue. Check it out. I don't know, maybe you can see the blue right there. See the blue colors? Now, when I was a kid, I always wondered, how come my blood is blue when I look at it, but then when I get cut, it bleeds red? So your blood looks blue. You hold your breath, you'll turn blue. Don't. But as soon as you get cut, that blood gets out in the air, bam, turns back red because the red blood cells have hemoglobin that soaks up oxygen. Blood loves oxygen. So you'll never see someone <laughs> bleed blue if there's oxygen around. It always, wait a minute, I got an idea. What if you're in outer space where there's no oxygen and you got cut, would the blood be blue? I don't know, that's a question. I always like questions like this. Here's even a picture of a red blood cell. It's red because it has hemoglobin and it's in a capillary. So there's a body cell, a red blood cell, and that's the capillary. So capillaries are pretty small. All right, so if you look on the next page, this is fantastic. Check this heart out. This is a drawing of the human heart. And I actually brought a model of the human heart with me today. This is the actual size of a human heart. There was a, a cadaver, a person that died, and they donated their body to science. And what you see here is the actual size and the shape of a human heart. They took it and they molded it. And it's not pumping right now, but if I lift it open, there's some flaps. And this is made out of latex rubber. But you can see what a heart looks like inside. You also have a model of a heart that I sent to each classroom. Okay, here's the model of the heart. I made out of hard plastic. I can open it up. Here's red blood going to the body, blue coming from the body. If I open it up, you can see the different chambers. One, two, three, four. That's the magic number today. One, two, three, four. Pretty cool. But you have a drawing of it. 
and a diagram of it right here. So this looks kind of complicated, but we're going to break it down right now. But before we do that, I want to uh, play a short video that tells all about the human heart, and it's pretty amazing. Check this out. All right, before we start to our model, um, what I need for us to do is to take a look at our worksheet. On our worksheet here, on the second page, I have made a diagram of the human heart. And it seems complicated, but with the help of our book and our model, we should be all right on this. So let's see what's going on here. Down at the bottom, these are the different blood flows through the heart. These are the different steps. And I would like us to just go ahead and letter these right now. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All right? A through G, because we'll be able to follow this blood. And this is actually right out of your book. So let's start with A. Blood enters the heart in the right atrium. You see the heart is in two parts. It's got the right side and the left side. So the blood comes in through here and through here. That goes through the back of it. And it comes in through the top through A. So go ahead and write A right there. And that is the right atrium. The word atrium is like an atrium in your school. It's a window at the top. So blood comes in. So this is half your heart, the right side and this is the left side. So you have a right side, that's your right side, and you have a left side. So that's the right atrium, and this is the right side also, and this is the left, and this is the left. So A, blood enters the right atrium, comes down, goes through this valve right here. This is a tricuspid valve, and it goes to B, B. This is the right ventricle, the right ventricle, okay? This is blue blood so far. So if you have your crayon or a marker, you can do this now or later, but this is all blue blood so far. Now see, it pumps it to the lung, so it comes back up from here, it goes this way through this valve, and this goes to the lungs, right here. And so the lungs, uh, you have two lungs, by the way. You have the left lung, and you have the right lung. So if it pumps it this one, it also has to pump it over here to the left lung here. So A, B, C is here. That's C. And this is C. Okay? So the blood comes in, A, B, C, goes to two sides of the lungs. I'm going to use my blue right now. So blue, blue blood coming in from the body, blue blood coming in from the top of the body. So from here, it's from the arms and head. And from here, it's from the stomach and legs. Okay, it comes in, comes down to A, goes down to B, goes up through a valve, goes to the lung. It's blue, has no oxygen, and it comes out to the other lung. Okay, now it's in the lungs. So there's your blue blood. It's blood that has carbon dioxide, it has carbon dioxide in it, CO2, CO2. Now something cool happens. D, in the lungs, when you suck air in, you get oxygen. So now it's going to be red and it's got to get back to the heart. So it comes back to the heart and it ends up in E, which is over here, E, which is the left atrium. 
Okay? So now we got red coming back. And from here, remember it's four chambers, one, two, three. It goes down, goes through this bicuspid valve into F. And if these are atriums up top, these are ventricles down here. Ventricles. You can use your book. Now, it's not over. We've got to get that blood back to the body. So it goes up through this valve. And this is the cool part. It comes up and comes here through the arms, head, other arm. Okay? And it comes down here to the stomach and the legs. And then it goes to the capillaries, the tiny capillaries, and the whole thing starts over again. So now we're coming, let's go back to the lungs. In the lungs, the blue picks up oxygen and turns red. It goes back into the heart, which is the left atrium. It comes back into the heart. It goes down to the left ventricle. It's pushed up. Then it goes through the aorta. This is a big, oh, broke my crown. Goes up through the aorta to the left, to the right arm, to the left arm, to your head. At the same time, it's coming down to your body. And so it's kind of cool. There's a, a drawing in, uh, in your book that shows this also. But here is the list. You should be able to figure this out. And we're going to make a model. Here's the model. Watch. This is blue, blue, this is red, red, and of course we got our lungs here. Okay, that's what we're going to use these for in just a moment. So the heart is a fantastic organ that pumps blood out. Your movement of your body brings the vascular, the blood through the veins, back to your heart. We've made a diagram of it. Now it's time for us to work in the groups to make a model of it. So take your paper plate, and we're going to draw this together. Okay, one person, uh, I'm going to make a kind of a heart-shaped organ. Okay, there's my heart. And... Remember, there's a right side, and there's a middle, so let's divide this down the middle, because your heart is divided down the middle. Okay? It's kind of thick. It's a muscle, so it's pretty thick. Okay, so, so far, that's only two chambers. So this is the right, and this is the right. Go ahead and fo follow me and do this. This is the left. And this is the left. So let's divide that in here. There's a little chamber up here. That's a valve that lets blood through, but closes and doesn't let blood come back. You don't want blood coming back and forth. Same thing on this side here. There's a valve. Okay. And so this is the right atrium which we called, earlier we called A. It goes down here to B, which is the right ventricle. Okay? And it gets pumped out to the lungs. And then it comes back red from the lungs. And it goes here to E, which is the left atrium. on down to F, which is the left ventricle. Now, I'm going to use my crayons to uh, color the thick muscle of the, of the heart. I want to be able to see the four chambers. Remember, this is an organ made up of special tissues. that are made up of special cells. Okay. 
All right. So, and just so you remember, the this is red. Uh, this is oh, this is I almost did it wrong. This is the blue, blue blood coming down. Blue blood on the right side. Going to the lungs is blue. The gases are exchanged. Coming back, it's red. And there's our four steps right there. Four parts and the lungs. So go ahead and get this set up. Right atrium, right ventricle to the lungs, from the lungs, left atrium, left ventricle to the body. Once I have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and put my cups where they go. And my gas exchange over here to my lungs. I'm going to use my pipette. Instead of a muscle pumping, I'm going to use my fingers. And I want all of you to move the blood in the correct order. Okay, let's start like this. To the right atrium, to the right ventricle, to the lungs. From the lungs, it gets oxygen. To the left atrium, to the left ventricle, to the body. Once you get it set up, practice moving it from spot to spot. All right, we've had time now to move the blood through our model of the heart. And hopefully it's given you more understanding of how when your heart beats, how it's pushing the blood through your body and through the heart to the lungs. It's called arteries when it goes that way. It's called veins when it comes back to your heart. All right, now we've read about and done research about uh, heart and how the blood moves. We've done a worksheet on it. We've made a model on it. Now it's time to see the real thing. And so since we've talked about cells and cells working together as tissue and tissues working together as organ and organs working together as systems, it's time to show you a system that's I think is pretty amazing and that is the circulatory and the respiratory system that's put together. And we're going to use a cow, a, an actual cow. But what you see right here are uh, some parts, now my tools here, my scissors and my uh, scalpel where I've been doing a little bit of dissection. And this material is preserved. It's, uh, it's not been cooked, but it has been soaked in chemicals. And this will stay preserved for about four months as long as it stays moist. And the first thing I want to show you is uh, this is part of the respiratory system. What we have here is the trachea, and that's where the air goes in and down to the lungs. And I cut one of the lungs off. Here's, here's one of the lungs right here. So first of all, let's take a look at this trachea. You can see the, the hole right there. When you take a deep breath, that's where the air goes into. And this is both cartilage and bone. So if I cut a little bit, as I see some bone right there, I might be able to cut through this right here, these pretty sharp scissors. And But this is when you get bronchitis or a sore throat, this is your trachea, your throat's up here, and this is where the air goes down inside of it. And it goes all the way down. Now, also attached to this is some other material, and this is part of the esophagus the food tube that goes down. Let's see here. No, this is a, a large vein also. So there's veins. And here is one lung. And it's in lobes. These are called lobes. So everywhere you see this here, there is air going in and out and blood going in and out. So if I cut one of these off, we should be able to see several. Let me cut off one of these lobes right here. And we should be able to see both blood and air holes coming in. Where air goes in and out, that's one hole, and where blood comes in and goes out. So I'm going to cut that off. Cool. 
and check it out. Uh, look at right there. I mean, you can see that there is air, and next to it is veins and arteries. So we have both air going in and out through the same hole, and we have arteries and veins coming back. This one, here's the whole lung, and since there's three classes, we'll divide this up, because we'll, uh, I'm going to cut the heart in just a second. But you can see how this, I put my finger in here, this is the air, and here is a where uh, the blood goes in. It's soft, and the air uh, cavity is, is strong. You can actually feel the cartilage in there. Okay, so two lungs. This was attached right here. And I've taken it off. There was a lot of fat on this cow and skin tissue. So here's some skin tissue for you to look at. And this is fatty tissue right here that you can squeeze. And um, in fact, if you don't exercise, you get more and more of this fat on you. It stores your energy, but it's not good for you because it really slows things down. Okay, lungs are pretty important because every time everything you breathe in fills this these balloon up and close and balloon up and close. So smoke from cigarettes or dust gets in here and turns a healthy lung like this black. All right, so let's get the heart. Here we go. Here's the heart. And you can see it's heart-shaped. It's kind of cool. So I've taken my scalpel and I've cut through this. And so we should be able to open this up and see. Here we go. If I can open it and cut it, there we go. And let me finish cutting this here. And there we go. I'm cutting. And we have the different tissues. And this is a thick, thick muscle. Your heart is a muscle. And since it's a muscle, it needs blood and oxygen. And finish cutting this into two parts. Kind of amazing, really. I'm cutting through the top where the blood comes in and out, because remember the atrium is where the blood comes in and out. And so we have a top. Here's the right ventricle. And here is the uh, where the blood comes back in. There's still actually some blood. This may be kind of cool. But this right here, this looks like pudding. That's actual blood That uh, that is actual blood that has kind of turned to congealed here. So here's the two hearts. Here's one. Here's the other one. 